Hi, today we're going to be talking about client-side fetching in React. We will go over the classic fetch inside a user effect and then look at a better way to do it using modern React features. Before we start, I'm going to assume that you have a basic grasp of fetch as well as the use effect and use state hooks inside React. So let's have a look at the classic approach. We have a use effect with an empty dependency array so that this code in the callback is run once when the component mounts. We will handle the error, the loading, and the success states manually to conditionally render different UI. Is there a better way we can do this? Well, yes. What we can do is move some of the logic into a custom hook. In this case, a custom hook is just a function that has the use prefix. And what happens here is that we separate the fetching logic from the UI logic, which is a great separation of concerns for the developer experience. In fact, this was the default way to fetch data in 2019 when React version 16.8 came out. But it's 2025 and it's not the best solution that we have now. So we still have to manually manage the state and it's also a little bit less performant. So let us look at a more modern and better way to do this with React version 19. So what I'm first going to do is import suspense and use from React. Suspense requires two things. It requires a child component that suspends and a fallback. So let me just do that. Suspense. And then I'll write the child component first, which I'll just call cat fact for now. And let's define the cat fact. So cat fact. And then we'll just return a simple hello for now. And it also requires a fallback. So let's write the fallback. The fallback can just be a React component. So in this case, I'm just going to write a p tag with the word loading inside. So with this pattern, the child component, in this case cat fact, it needs to explicitly suspend. And when it explicitly suspends, it's going to find the nearest suspense boundary and tell it, oh, I'm suspending, so you should render your fallback instead. So how are we going to get this child component to explicitly suspend and tell the suspense boundary to render the fallback? Well, that's where the use API comes in from React version 19. The use API in React version 19, it takes in a promise as an argument. And while the promise is still resolving, it will explicitly suspend, which is exactly what we need when we're using fetch. So let's use it, use, and we'll put the promise in. In this case, it's our fetch promise. So the cat fact URL, and then we'll pass the data. So res.json, and then json.fact, because that is where the data, that's just how the data is shaped. So with the cat fact, we can put it in here and we can try it. But what's happening? It's just loading forever. Well, if we look at the network tab, what we'll see is that the fact is actually infinitely fetching this is definitely not the behavior that we want. So what's going on? Well, with the use API, the fetch or the promise inside it cannot be created inside the render. In other words, it must be stable. So let's move this fetch outside and put it in this component here. So let's just call it cat promise for now. And then move it in and then we'll pass this promise as a prop to the component so cat promise cat promise and then we'll pass in the props and wow the code is working nicely now we have our fetch and this use makes sure that this cat promise will explicitly suspend while it is still resolving. So what happens when we have an error? Let's say we have an incorrect URL, for example. The whole page disappears. This is definitely not what we want. So what can we do? 
Well, there are two main methods that we can handle errors with this pattern. The first method is simply by defining a promise.catch instead of throwing the error. So we'll catch it and then we'll provide an alternative value. So let's provide an alternative value and run it. And yeah, it works correctly and we only needed to add another line of code. So the other method is by using an error boundary. So what we can do is import error boundary from react error boundary. And error boundaries work very similar to suspense boundaries. In that they also, the error boundary, when the child components are erroring or there's a thrown error, the error boundary will then render a fallback instead. So what we can do is the fallback can just be another React component. Error from error boundary. Nice. So what we see here is that we still have this error that we're catching, but if we didn't have it and we removed it, we would still be able to catch the error with the error boundary. And this is great. We don't have to manually manage logic, but you might be saying, Eric, there's UI here, there's UI here, and then the fetching is just in the middle. There isn't a clear separation of concerns. Well, we can fix this by using a custom hooks again. So let's define a custom hook. Use cat promise and just return the fetch and the code works. So this is the way that you can do data fetching with modern React features. So in conclusion, please stop using fetch inside your use effects. It's less maintainable, less readable, and less performant. Instead, opt for more modern React patterns, or instead look at other popular React libraries, including Tanstack React Query and SWR. I won't be going over them today, but I will leave a link to them in the description, as well as all the code that I've used here today and the slides. Thank you.